Welcome to the Teapot Reads. I'm the Teapot. This is what I'm currently reading and I am so happy to see you today. Hello! I hope you're doing well. I hope this video is finding you on a good day. I am going to be going over my current manga collection. Uh, before I do that, I have one large stack and then like three smaller stacks, so I don't have that many volumes of manga. But before I do that, I just want to say I had for a very brief period in like sophomore year of college, I was like getting, maybe even junior year of college, where I was like getting into manga. And I, I know exactly what started it, but I don't know why I just kind of like stopped. I think just maybe the cost, because manga is very expensive. And before I worked at Barnes & Noble, I really couldn't justify manga and books because I read manga so quickly. And it is, you know, like, between seven and, and twelve dollars for a volume of manga depending on what you're getting so you know that's kind of why I stopped manga has been really big lately just on the internet space but also like working in a bookstore the, like one of the most frequent questions we get is whether we have a particular volume of manga and a lot of manga series are like temporarily out of print or certain volumes are because it is taking a while for the printed and translated copies to come to America so like there are some series where some volumes just haven't haven't made it over here in a while and it's going to be a while and I can kind of tell you some of the dates like off the top of my head just because like people ask a lot. Yeah so I have kind of my manga split between the stuff I was reading and interested in reading back the first time I was getting into it and the stuff that I have picked up to be reading now. My taste hasn't really changed that much. I think I'm more willing now to read outside of my comfort zone which is like, I mean, my comfort zone with manga is like, I don't know the exact terms, but like fantasy, fun, easy, nothing like too dramatic or anything. But now people recommend me stuff and I'm much more willing to listen to it, whether it's darker or not a fantasy or just something that I wouldn't normally pick up. You're going to see that I am missing some volumes from series and I will explain why but if it's the middle of a series it's probably because it's out of print right now and I have a copy on the way as soon as it enters into stock again kind of situation. I would love to do a video like this every year to kind of track my manga collection growth. I am working really hard not to overbuy. I think it is very easy to overbuy manga before you know you read a series just to collect them all to make sure you have every volume and I'm trying really hard not to do that because I'm trying to actually read what I own <laughs> that's a big goal for me right now I'm also working on getting like a nicer place to keep my manga it kind of lives in a little stack over to the side of my bookcases like you see how my Cassandra Clare books are yeah it's like this for manga and I don't mind stacks but I think books and manga deserve more love than that but that is enough for an introduction, so we are just going to get into it, and we're going to start with the manga series that I have bought but haven't read yet. First off, we have After School Hanako-kun. This is a sort of extra volume in the, Hanuk the Toilet Bound Hanako-kun series, which I love, and you're going to see all the volumes I have of in a little bit. It is like little vignettes and short stories, and... I just haven't read it because I'm kind of like, okay, if I haven't read it, if I just keep it to the side, I'll always have a Hanukkah Kuhn I haven't read. Th this, this series is so cute. I'll talk about it more when I actually show you the volumes. Then we have Goodnight Pun Pun Volume 1. This is big. This is the most different from everything else I own. I just, people kept, like customers kept being like, it's really good. And I kept seeing it popping up on Reddit and, and on TikTok. And I was like, okay, Fine, I will pick up Goodnight Pun Pun when we got it back in stock. This is also the only manga I own that was wrapped. Uh, so I don't know what it's about, so I'm just going to read you the back. And it says, Meet Pun Pun Punyama. He's an average kid in an average town. He wants to win a Nobel Prize and save the world. He wants the girl he has a crush on to like him back. He wants to find some porn. That's what he wants, but what does he get? And yeah, I'm just really curious. The art style is not my favorite art style. It's very realistic, um, like maybe over realistic, except for like Pun Pun himself. I think, yeah, he's drawn like, um, like on the cover. So we'll see how I, how I end up 
feeling about this. I do appreciate, you can't really tell from this, but all the spines when you line them up for the series do have pun pun on the side. But I am really curious. I am interested in giving this one a try. I'm probably going to give it a try sooner or later just because I'd like to know sooner than later whether I need to keep it or unhaul it. Then we have volumes one and two in Way of the House Husband. I am so excited for this one. This seems so cozy and fun. It is an anime and I'm not sure if the anime or the manga came first. But it is about um, him. His name is the immortal dragon I guess he probably has another name but he was this like a major Yakuza member and like a total badass and he's like retired and is a house husband now and it's supposed to be really cute and it sounds really cozy and it looks really funny like I mean look at the poses on the back it says honor or housework without honor or humanity like it's just so cute. I did. I do have the first two volumes because I initially picked up volume one at the time that volume two was out of print, thinking I would get to volume one before I, like, before volume two came back in print. So I had like ordered this, but I still haven't gotten to it yet. Again, this one is probably gonna be soon. The next series I pick up is probably either going to be Pun Pun or Way of the House Husband. Then we have Blue Period Volume One. Again, this one has sort of cozy vibes. I don't know why I get that sense from it, but it just gives me cozy vibes and also just it is about art and art appreciation. Basically, he decides he wants to change his life and become an artist and just the struggles and drama of that. This series, I think there's a couple volumes out. I really haven't seen a lot of people talking about it, but there is a spike in people buying it at my store, which is what initially raised my attention to it because I had to keep ordering it in. And so I ended up picking up because I was like, I want to see what the hype's about. It's really fun. I love the covers. I really like the art. Um, I want to try to find one with like decent art. <laughs> like, here we go. That's a good one. I don't know. I just really like the art. I also like look at the back is lots of fun. So yeah, Blue Period Volume 1. So then we have Full Metal Alchemist Volume 1 Full Metal Edition. This is a hardcover. It's the only hardcover manga I own. It's also, uh, the can't really tell on the cover, but the back you might be able to tell there's like some shimmer. I also like kind of appreciate the page texture. It's not normal pages. They're higher quality. We'll see how that is actually reading wise. I don't know much about Full Metal Alchemist. It is an anime that my brother has been trying to get me to watch for a couple years and that I have just been very against watching. I just... It's one of those things where it's like, I know I won't like the anime. And I couldn't tell you why, but I just know it. And whether that's true or not, I have this like knowledge ingrained in myself so much that I'm like, I, I'm not going to watch it. As for the manga, I think I could really enjoy this. It's a fantasy, I think, and it's about like two brothers, I think. I, I know so little about it. I picked it up because the mangaka is doing another series and that series has a lot of early hype even though we like people don't even know what it's about and I was like okay I should read this or at least give this a try and then when the next series comes out give that one a try like that's kind of what my thought process was I am the longer I've had it like sitting on my TBR pile the more excited I am to get to this so that's kind of fun oh this was a total cover buy which had Atelier volume one and I'm sorry I haven't been saying the authors um I will be putting that down below for the ones I skipped, but this is by Komomi Shirahama. This is the only, I think, manga to have won an Eisner Award, and it's, like, stunning. And it's, like, not just the cover is like that, but, like, the whole, the whole volume. Like, all the art is just this gorgeous, and that's 100% why I bought it. I think it's a fantasy. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's a fantasy if you can't tell from the cover. The, the description doesn't give me much. It's like a quest story, I think. Really excited to get to this, but it is probably going to be a while just because I, I'm excited, but not that excited. It was definitely a cover and an art buy. Then we have Phantom Tales of the Night Volume 1. This is by Matsuri. I, um, I think I bought this again for a cover buy. 
it sounds kind of like fairy tale aspect. People go to uh, the Murakumo, Murakumo Inn and there they share stories or they trade stories or the innkeeper tells them stories, something like that. It reminded me of this anime I watched years and years ago and I cannot for the life of me remember the name of the anime so hopefully I'll be able to track it down and put it here but basically it was an anthology of short fairy tale esque stories they were all kind of creepy bent but they were all very beautiful it was sort of like if Ghibli made light horror I guess and yeah this just reminded me of that anime so I, I do really want to pick it up it's also one I haven't heard anything about so I thought that would be kind of neat give it a try see if it's something I could recommend at work then I have Bungo Stray Dogs Volume 1. This is the uh this is written by Kafka Asagiri and the artist by Sango Harukawa. I know very little about this except that I think that they are literary themed powers or characters, something like that. I just know that I remember when it was coming out and I remember putting it on like a wish list at the time and really wanting to read it and just never actually getting around to it because then I had like dropped off my manga interest at the time. So I was like, okay, wait, I should finally buy it and give it a try. It's a big series. I think it's got like middling popularity. It seems fun. It seems fun. It seems like it's going to be a really fun, almost noir-esque type of series. And finally, of the ones I haven't read, we have Blue Flag Volume 1. From what I understand, this is like a love square where two sets of friends have crushes on... I'm just gonna... I'm gonna walk you through the back because it's like four people and like person A has a crush on person B, but person B has a crush on person C and person D has a crush on person A and person C has crush on person D, something like that. But I'm just going to read you the back. So love is already hard enough, but it becomes an unnavigable maze for unassuming high school student Taichi Ichinos and his shy classmate Futaba Kuze when they begin to fall for each other after their same-sex best friends have already fallen for them. For some reason, Taichi Ichinose just can't stand Futaba Kuze, but at the start of his third year in high school, he finds himself in the same homeroom as her along with his childhood friend Tomomita, a star athlete. One day, Futaba opens up to Taichi and admits she has a crush on Toma, but then she asks for his help in confessing to him. There's just one problem. Toma seems to already have a secret crush on someone else. So, yeah, like, a, a love square. It sounds cute. It sounds very modern way to take the, like, love triangle and just warp it. And I'm excited. It sounds really cute. It sounds like a fun high school drama kind of thing going on. So that's manga I haven't read. Then we're going to go through manga I have read this year so it's actually not that much i've only these last couple months really started trying to get into it and like i said manga is still expensive even with my employee discount and there are volumes that are just very hard to get i do want to say i was kind of hoping to film this video after i had put in an order for most of the volumes of sweat and soap and they have not yet arrived they're just taking a little longer than i thought but i have been reading the sweat and soap manga and i'm really enjoying it. It's so cute. If you watch my vlogs, you know that my friend let me borrow volume one and it was just a uh, peak. But first we have Spy Families volumes one and five. I have read through volume five, so I have read volume two, three, and four, but they are out of print at the moment, so I had to read them online. I do actually subscribe to the Viz Media app and you can, if you, it's like for $1.99 a month, you have access to this huge library, which includes Spy Family, My Hero Academia, I think Dr. Stone is on there, um, One Piece, One Punch Man, like there's a lot on there that you can read. So I, I do recommend that if you just really want to get into it on cheaply. But yeah, so that's how I read volumes 2, 3, and 4. So Spy Family, this is by Tatsuya Endo. This series is so cute. It is so cute. Oh my god. So Twilight is a spy. And for his mission, he has to infiltrate a school, but he is obviously not a child, so he has to adopt a child. He adopts Anya. She is a telepath. And he also needs a wife, so he, he meets um, Moore, and she is, I'm sorry, Yor, not Moore. <laughs> I'm just crossing my series over. He meets Yor, and she's an assassin. So the three of them are keeping their identities hidden from each other. And it is so cute and there's like antics but there's also a little bit of romance and it's really funny and the aesthetic the like setting is 
almost like Cold War Berlin. It's so interesting. It's such a cool, it's such a cool setting. And the art, I wasn't expecting to love the art as much as I did, but the way that the blacks just kind of pop with the characters, it's, it's so cool. It's so fun. It's adorable. It's very cozy. If you are looking to try manga for the first time, I would give you this series if I could get my hands on it. But I would give you this series because it's it's got like everything you could enjoy. I really hope an anime comes out because I would flock to that. Then we have another new favorite and that is the Toilet Bond Hanukkah-kun series. So we have volume one, volume two, volume three, volume five, volume six, volume eight, and volume nine. These are by Idealro. Dialro, I'm sorry, Idalro, Adil I'm sorry if that's incorrect. It's really good. It's very much my typical manga that I am drawn to and in general my typical like guilty pleasure type story. So okay, what is it about? It is about Hanako. This is Hanako. He is a Japanese myth kind of similar to Bloody Mary. You go into the women's restroom, you say Hanako-kun or Hanako like three times and then like she, it's supposed to be a she, appears and like grants your wish or kills you, something like that. So it's very much like the Bloody Mary story. Except this time when <laughs> when uh, Yashiro goes into her school's restroom to do this, he pops out and she's like you're not a little girl and he's like well I'll grant your wish and she's like okay well I want this guy who I have a crush on to fall in love with me and he's like well I can't really do that but I will be your wingman and so they do that and, and by the end of the first chapter she ends up being indebted to him and becoming his assistant it's really wholesome <laughs> It's so cute. It's so funny. So anyway, there are like multiple mysteries at the school and there's something wrong with them. So Yashiro and Hanako and later Ko end up teaming up to kind of help put the restless school mysteries to rest. It is really good. The series is addicting. It's absolutely addicting. Again, when I started reading this, a lot of the volumes were out of print. There are still some that I'm waiting to get my hands on. But at this point, you can get most of the volumes, and I strongly recommend picking it up. It is a lot of fun. There is also an anime which I haven't had the time to get around to yet, but I am planning on doing it sooner than later. So we're on to the books that I was reading the first time around I got into manga. We're going to start... We're going to go backwards in, like, least favorite to favorite. And I'm going to kind of explain why it's, like, landing where it is, I think. So first of all, we have volumes 3, 7, 8, 9, and 10 of My Hero Academia. This series is super popular. It's written by Koi Okohai Horikoshi. I ended up not reading them physically. I read it on Viz Media's app and website. Like I said, I do that subscription. Subscription is super worth it. That's kind of how I read most of My Hero Academia up until a certain point. I do like this series. I'm actually probably going to unhaul these volumes. I just don't need them or want them and I don't really plan on collecting the series physically. Like I said, I do really like it. It's really addicting. But I kind of stepped away from the series and I stepped away and don't feel the urge to go back. So for me that's kind of a sign that it's just a fine series. It's like whatever. It was enjoyable but it was just kind of like candy. Like it was fun to eat at the time but now I'm just kind of like I don't have an urge for it. Uh, if you haven't heard of My Hero Academia, it's basically a superhero story. It's definitely got more to it than that. The characters are 100% what make it. I Aizawa is my favorite. Yeah, the characters are what make this. It's a lot of fun. It's really funny. This is another good one if you're planning to get into manga. I think it's another great series to kind of start you off. Again, because you can read it for so affordable a price on Viz Media, but... It's also long. It's a really long series, so it's kind of a commitment. It's the only really long series that I started so late in its run. Then we have volume one of The Demon Prince of Momochi House. This is by Aya Shuto. Um, I'm probably gonna unhaul this one too. It sounded like a cute romance fairy tale thing. I, there's like a cursed house, if I remember correctly, 
and she ends up like owning the house or it's like inherited to her or something and there's like multiple pretty boys there at it was fine it, there was like so little for me to like hold on to and be like this interests me um i don't mean to like rank it higher than my hero academia except that i'm also going to be unhauling this one at some point then we have a series that my friend turned me on to that is now taken on like another life of its own and i'm kind of thinking about going back and rereading it and seeing if i um still like it as much as i did the first time and that is horimiya this is by hiro and daisuke hagiwara we have volumes one two and three these covers i do think are a lot of fun it's a rom-com high school story she's like a much more conventionally attractive or no wait hold on he's seen no she's like a popular type girl okay he's like a weirdo but then they get paired up for some assignment and he like reveals that he's like a bad boy like he's got like piercings and puts his hair up it's it's kind of funny uh almost the reverse i think of a lot of like tropes and like rom-com that we see where like the woman takes her glasses off and puts her hair up and suddenly she's pretty like it's kind of like that vibe um it was fun it was cutesy i remember enjoying it but i it's take like recently i think it's become like a really popular series which is funny to me because it's kind of older you know i'd go back and retry to reread it i just remember not being like taken with it the way I am taken with Sweat and Soap which is another like rom-com story. Then we have Case Study of the Vanitas. Uh, this is by Jun Mochizuki. I gave it a try. I thought it was okay. I really love the art though. The art levels this up. It is a vampire um, a vampire steampunk story so that's also really fun but also by Jun Mochizuki. I started reading Pandora Hearts and I have volumes one and two and I really was really enjoying this. And I recently found out that most of the volumes are out of print. So that's slightly heartbreaking because now I have to find ways to track down all these volumes and that's going to be a little bit of a headache and part of me is like, do I want to do that? I This is like a, um, a dark Alice in Wonderland-esque type story. I'm just going to read you the back of it. The air of celebration surrounding 15-year-old Oz Vesalius' coming-of-age ceremony quickly turns to horror when he is condemned for a sin about which he knows nothing. Thrown into the abyss, an eternal prison from which there is no escape, Oz meets a young girl named Alice who is not what she seems. Now that the relentless cogs of fate have begun to turn, will they lead only to crushing despair for Oz, or will Alice provide him with some shred of hope? It's cool, it's weird, It's it's got a lot of confusion, especially at the beginning, but it also has a really well-built society and world and characters, so I did want to continue this. Um, I might have dropped the ball and it might be a little too late. Here's another series that... Uh, these these next two are series that I plan on rereading the volumes I've read in the past and catching up because I still think super fondly about them. And first of all, we have Blue Exorcist. This is by Kazui Kato. So we have volumes one, two, three, and four. I this is the first anime that made me just like fall in love with anime I like I've never loved an anime as much as I love Blue Exorcist. The manga is a lot of fun too. I really enjoyed it. It is about Rin. He finds out he's actually the son of Satan and um anyway ends up going to an exorcism school with his brother to eventually take on and defeat Satan. It is such a good series. It's so much fun. There are a lot of great characters. I, I love it so much. I love I love Rin um, and Yukio, his brother. I love them both so much. I actually, haha, I forgot. I forgot I had him here. And it's kind of dusty. I'm sorry, but we have Rin and Yukio. Ah, ah, look, I love them. I love them so much. They're so cool. So yeah, I plan on rereading the volumes I have and catching up on Blue Exorcist because it's still going. I think they're at volume 25 or 26. And then my absolute favorite, my number one manga series of all time. I will scream to the universe that this series is amazing. I will shove it in your hands if you ask me for a recommendation at work. That is Noragami. This series is by Arachitoka, which is two different people writing under a pen name. Oh my god, this series is so good. So we have volume one, volume two, 
Volume 3. Volume 4. Volume 5. Volume 6. Volume 7. Volume 8. Volume 9. Volume 10. Volume 11. Volume 12. Volume 13. Volume 14. Volume 15. Volume 16. Volume 17. And then this is a short story collection called Stray Stories. I love this series so much. I can't even... I can't even contain how much I love it. I am not caught up because... I think around volume 17 is when I kind of dropped off reading manga because I was I think I started right around the time volume 4 was coming out so I started really early on it and the first several volumes is like one a month and now that it's like caught up it takes a little longer so I'm like five volumes behind at this point but origami what is it about okay so Yato this is Yato he's a homeless god he has a he has a dark mysterious history but he's a homeless god basically and he will do anything for you grant any wish for you for like one yen i think like it's it's very affordable it might be slightly more than that oh, hold on it doesn't matter it's like some cheapo price okay hiori is a regular girl she sees him somehow because the gods kind of exist in this like other plane like they exist in our world but they can kind of cross the near and far shores so not regular people don't tend to see them unless they've directly initiated contact basically and she sees him crossing the street and she sees a bus coming so she's like holy shit he's going to be hit by a bus so she jumps in front of the bus and pushes him away and gets hit herself so she ends up getting hurt she she's fine for the most part but her soul kind of becomes untethered from her body sometimes so she ends up being able to cross into the near and far shore uh she basically asks Yato for a wish you know she pays him and she's like fix me I want to get better and like he's like sure it's gonna be a while though and they end up forming like a partnership they're friends it's very cute it's got romance vibes it's so much fun there are so many gods and characters in the series there's also a character named Yukine he's not on this cover here we go as you can name he is Yato's weapon I forget exactly what term they use because the anime and the manga use different terms but he's like a special like weapon that lost but pure souls of humans when they die they can become these weapons used by the gods unless they're corrupted which is a big concern throughout the series is whether Yukine is going to be corrupted because he's got a lot of angst they also have to work on like dealing with exercising basically other souls who have become lost but evil any oh my god there are so many great characters again characters 100 percent make this series Bishamon oh my god like that whole plot they, they're oh I'm gonna I can't but I recommend it a hundred percent I love this series so much it, one of not just my favorite manga series but one of my favorite series I've read of anything ever across the board it's great so that is it those are my manga series that is my manga collection I I'm really enjoying re re-entering this medium because there are a lot of stories that I think are only tellable via manga and I mean partly because of you know they're Japanese you know they're coming from a different point of view than like American and Western stories which is what I tend to read novel format but also just like the length of the stories being told and sometimes the complexity because you're allowed to do a lot more when you have more time to do it so I really am um, I am really enjoying it. If you have manga recommendations that based on what I've read and loved you think I would really enjoy, please let me know. I'm always looking to get more. I have my eye on a couple series at work that I just haven't picked up yet, but there are quite a few that I'm like, yeah, I do want to read those. Like I said, Sweat and Soap. It's pretty much every volume except volume three, which is the only one still out of print, are on their way to me, and I'm going to devour those as soon as they arrive. I cannot wait. It's a cute little series. And like I said, I am planning to do this every year just to watch how my manga collection grows. Also, I think it's a lot of fun to watch videos like this, so I think people would enjoy that. But that is where I'm going to leave you. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for sticking around. If you liked this content, subscribe. I try to post weekly. I get at least one up almost every week. And I have so many videos that I am working on that are down the pipeline. So these next couple months you're going to see, I think, more than regular. And I'm very excited for that. Goodbye. I hope if it is cold where you're at, you're staying warm. And if it is warm where you're at, you are staying comfortable. And most of all, I hope you are reading a great book. I will see you next time. Bye!